Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Android application development tutorial. In today's episode, we are going to learn about how to working with Android S2 Lite database. So here is a simple application that will demonstrate all the basic database operations like insertion, deletion, updation, etc. So this application contain almost all the basic databases operations so we are going to learn each of these operations in separate videos so in this video i am going to show you how to create a database in sqlite and how to add information into the database so when user click the add contact button this will displace another activity that contain contact name mobile number and email address so after filling this form if the user click the save button we have to save all these informations into the android sqlite database so create this application in android studio here is the activity here is the main activity layout this is the launcher activity so whenever user select this add contact button we have to open this activity. In this activity, there is contact name, mobile number, and email address. So here I already create all the GUI parts of these applications. So now we have to create the necessary coding for performing the databases operations. So first, we have to set up the database. So here I am going to create, first here I am going to create a contract class. So the purpose of the contract class is the contract class act as a container for all the constants needed for working with the database. So whenever you need to change something in future, then you can change, you can make the changes more easier using the contract class. So the first step, we have to create the necessary contract classes. So here I am going to add a new Java class on the package. So right click the package and create a new Java class. And here I name it as user contract. Okay. And click OK. Okay, now we got a new class called the user contract. So if you want to add, if you need more than one table in your database, then you have to create separate static inner classes on the contract class to working with the table. So the contract class will define the overall structure of your database. So if there is multiple tables are needed for in your application, then you have to create separate classes for representing each of these table. So here in this application, we need only one table. So here I am going to create a class. That, that will represent our table in the database. So public static is an abstract class. Abstract class. I name it as new user info. Okay, so now you have to define all the needed constants in this class. So here we have to save information like the user contact name, mobile number and email address. So we have to save only three variables. So here I am going to declare that variables. So public static final string. The first one is the username. So username. And here I am going to represent the column name in the table. So this is a key which is used in our program. And the right side will represent the column name, the name of the column in the table. And I name it as user name. Okay. This is static. Now we have to define the second variable. So public static final string. Now we have to define a variable for saving the user mobile number. So user mobile equal to 
and here I name the column name as user mob user mobile and finally we need another variable for saving the user email so public static final string user email and and make the column column name as user email okay and one more thing we need a name for our table so here I am going to define another constant that will represent the table name public static final string table name so here I name the table as user info okay so here I just create an abstract inner class on the inner contract class and I define I declare all the needed constants inside the inner class okay now we have to define we have to create another Java class for the database operations so for performing the database operations you can you can use the SQLite helper class SQLite open helper so here I am going to create another Java class so I click the package and create another Java class and here I name it as user db user db helper and extends this class using SQLite open helper this one so the SQLite open helper will give some methods to perform the databases operations but if you want to interact with the database you can use the SQLite database SQLite database object okay so you have to override some methods here so implement the methods so you have to override on create method and on upgrade method and click OK so now we got two methods on create and on upgrade so in this on the on create the system will call the on create method if the table is not already exist that means if the database is created for the first time the system will call the on create method and if you perform another if you perform the databases operations again the system will check whether the database versions or the table is already exist then it will not call the on create method again okay so this class need a constructor there is no public constructor available in this class there is no default constructor is available for this class so we have to create some constructor here so public I name it as user this is the constructor there is no need for name the same as class name okay and here I provide an argument for this class say context object name it as context of course you need to call the super class constructor here using the super keyword and before going to call the super keyword you have to define another two variables here we need a name for the database and we have to specify some database versions so here I am going to define another two variables private static final string database name I name it as user info DB yeah, user info dot uh, DB ok and now we have to define some database versions so private static final int I name it as database versions I put the value 1 for database versions not versions database version okay 
Now we can call the superclass method, superclass constructor on the constructor of this class. So super and in this method you have to pass three arguments. First one is the context object, second one is the database name, the third one is the sorry there is four constructor first one is the context object second one is your database name third one is if you use any cursor factory object you have to pass the cursor factory object and final argument is the database version so first here I have to pass the context object so here in this constructor we already define a context argument so use that argument and next one you have to specify the database name so database name now you have to specify any cursor factory object so here we don't have any cursor factory object so specify null and finally you have to specify the database version so specify database version so if you create an object of this class with a context argument then this will create the database if the database is not existing so the system will check the database version if the database version is not changed is remain the same the system will not create the database instead it open the database and if there is a change in the database version the Android system will again recreate the database okay so after creating this database we have to display some log message log e first we have to specify some tag database operations and display the message database created or open ok so now we successfully create the database now we have to create a table inside the database so you can create the table in the onCreate method and for creating the table you have to you need an object of SQLite database so inside this onCreate method we already have an SQLite database object as an argument okay so now here I'm going to create the database so we have to define the query so here I am going to define the query for creating the table so private static final string I name it as create create query now here I am going to write the query for creating the database it's very important you have to take extra care while you write the query many of the users make mistakes while creating the query it's very important so here I am going to create the query for creating the table on this database so first we have to use create table and put a space here if you do not put the space here it is not keyword so always make sure that a space is available after table okay now you have to specify the table name we got the table name from the contractor class so on the contractor class we define the table name inside this where is the contractor class yes this one so we already defined the constants inside the inner class called the new user info our table name is user info you can use this variable for table name so go back to db user user db helper okay here we have to specify the table name so call the inner class new user info dot table name ok now we have to put a bracket for specifying the columns now we have to specify the first column name so new user info dot our first column name is username so username now we have to specify the data type of this column so it is represent a text so put a space here and specify the data type 
and put a comma operator for specifying the next column. Now we have to specify the next column. So new user info dot our second column is user email user mobile. Now we have to specify the data type. Put a space here and specify the data type as text. Put the comma operator. Now we have to specify the last column name. So new user info. Our last column name is user email. Now specify the data type text. Now we have to close the brackets and put a semicolon and finally close this statement with the semicolon. Okay, this is very important. While you create this query, you have to make sure that you will put some spaces on appropriate spaces, appropriate places. Okay. So now we have the query. Now we have to we have to create this table using the onCreate method. So inside this onCreate method, here I am going to create the table. So for creating this table by using the SQLite database object and call the execute SQL method and specify the query name here. Here the query name is create query. So after creating the table, we have to display some log message. With the talk database operations, change the message into table created. Okay. So now we we create the database and and also we create the table inside the on create method. Now we have to define some method for insertion for inserting the data. So you can define your own method for the insertion or deletion. So here I am going to create a method for inserting data. Public void. I name the method as add informations. And we need some arguments for this method. First, we have to specify the username. Second, we have to specify the user mobile. Third, we have to specify the user email. Also, we need an object of the SQLite database here. So, SQLite database DB. Okay. So, whenever user call this method, we have to insert. We have to insert some informations into the table. Okay, so in SQLite database, the data are inserted in the form of a map values, where the keys are represented by the column names. So for creating the map values, we have to create an object of content values. So create an object of content values. Name the object as content values and specify and create the object here. New content values. Now we have to add each of these informations into the content value object. So content values dot use the put keyword. First you have to specify the key. So we can get the key from the contract class. So new user info dot our first column name is user name and specify the data. Here the data is get from the argument name. Okay. And Insert the second value, content values dot put specify the key. Keys get from the uh, new user info inner class. The second column name is user mobile, and here the data is get from the variable mobile. And the third column is the email content values dot put. new user info dot user email and here the data source is email okay 
and finally we have to put all these in informations into the database we have to save all these informations into the database so we have to call insert method using the SQLite database object so db dot insert and this method need three arguments first one is the table name second one is null column hack third value is the content value object okay so use that method first we have to specify the table name get the table name from the inner class contract class new user info dot table name the second value second argument you have to specify at least one null column name if there is some columns that that is capable of holding null values you have to specify at least one column name this is for if the content value is empty suppose if there is no data is available on the content values then if you specify some column name null column value null column names the Android system will put some null values if there is the if the content value is empty otherwise if you put null instead of the column name the Android system will not update a row or it will not insert a new row if the content value is empty that is the purpose of this second argument and the final argument is the what is the final argument first one is the uh, table name second one is the null column field and final one is the content value object so you have to specify the content value object here so after executing all these statement we successfully insert one row of data into the table so here also we have to display some log message if there is no exceptions are occur this log message will display on the log cat window so one row is inserted one row is one row insert okay now we have to add informations into the database so go back to the new contact layout.xml file so user insert informations using this activity using this layout so the button on click method is add contact so go to the new contact activity.java file we have to define that method here so public void add contact and specify the view class argument here okay here we need some variables first we need an object of context second we need an object of the user db helper class so user db helper i name it as user db helper and finally we need an object of the SQLite database so SQLite database I name it as SQLite database so whenever user insert whenever user fill all the forms and after final and after user if the user click the save button this method will in, invoke add contact this method will invoke so first here I am going to get all the informations from the edit text field first is name string name equal to contact name dot get text convert that one into string second is the mobile contact mobile dot get the text and finally is the user email string email contact email dot get text and convert this one into string okay now we have all these informations now we have to perform the database insertion okay so first we have to initialize the user db helper object so here I am going to initialize the context object with this okay 
so first here I am going to initialize the user DB object so uh, user DB helper equal to new user DB helper and pass the context object okay now we have to initialize the SQLite database object so SQLite database equal to and use the user db helper object and user db helper object dot get writable database here I am here we are going to specify uh, we are going to done a write a writing operation so use this method get writable database okay now we have to insert we have to add information into the database so user db helper and call the add informations method and specify the data first one is name second one is mobile third one is email and finally you have to pass the SQLite database object this will insert one row of data into the database and finally we have to close the database so before going to close the database display a message using toast get the base context one row data saved ok and specify the length for the toast so toast don't make it into long and finally visible make it visible and after finishing all these activities we have to close the database so user db helper dot call the method called close okay now we complete all the coding for inserting some simple data into the SQLite database now this is the time to check the application so now I am going to run this application okay now we have the application available on the virtual device I click the add contact button so this will display another activity so here I am going to specify a name Prabish and specify some mobile number also we have it to specify some email ID Prabish123 at gmail.com okay Now before going to click the save button we have to set up the logcat window here is the logcat window in android studio so we can monitor the database status in this logcat window and click the save button so the data is saved yeah so inside the logcat window you can create you can see here the here the messages so here is the message that will display database is created so the database is successfully created there is no exceptions and here is the another message log message the table is created and here is the final message one row is inserted so all these operations are success we create the database uh, and we create the table and finally we insert one row of data so now I clear all this logcat window again now here I am going to add another data so change this data so now we already insert one row of data okay now I am going to add another row of data uh, page. so here the database is already created and the table is already created so if you add another row of data the table is not create again so that means the on create method is called when you create the database for the first time so add a name add a mobile number one two three four five three four okay and specify some email address three two one at yahoo and when I click the save button here you can see here the database is created or open that means the database is open for the data insertion and after it will insert one row of data that means here the onCreate method is not called again 
that means the database and uh, the system will check the database versions and the table name that means it is already available in the database so the system will not call the on create method again so i hope you enjoy this video this is how we insert some simple informations into the android sqlite database so in the next episode we are going to get back all the we are going to read all these informations from the database and display all these informations in a list view thank you for watching see you in the next episode